watching the round table also. I, I found out that you cracked the whip a little bit yourself on the court. Uh, Sam Perkins brought up the fact that <laughs> you know if he didn't set a screen for you with the right depth perception or at the right angle and you weren't able to get free to the level that you were supposed to, <laughs> you would let him know about it on the court. But I love what you said. You said, I didn't shoot 50% for my career just fooling around, you know, and I didn't do it alone. Everyone around on the team helped, but also I had to get that ball where I needed it, when I needed it to be successful. And then you went out and did it. You averaged over 20 points in your career three times. You averaged over 19, four more times, four-time All-Star, and shot close to 50% for your career, 11 years with the Mavericks, uh, 13 years for your whole career. But just how much did you – like you talked about, need the ball at a certain angle. And if you look at guys like yourself, Reggie Miller, you guys knew how to use the screen to your advantage to work to get free so you could score. Definitely. So and all that was in a secondary role because the me member, I, I wasn't, the, you know, I was Mark Aguirre doing that. So I was the secondary role. I was coming around trying to help the star do the thing, do his thing. But what was most important about all of that and, and, and any time you're trying to be successful is that I followed exactly what I did in college, and that's watch a lot of tape. I was only one. I was one of the few players that would get that tape. Uh, at, at that time, it was on VHS. Of course, you guys don't know anything about that. Everybody's in the digital world now. But I would pop into VHS and watch the screens, watch the player, watch comparable players play, and watch and see how that team played them, and then come back to my to my guys and try to incorporate that. Try to ask them to set a screen and go through the what ifs. What if he overplays? What if he What if he plays a certain way? What if the guard? So I would go through the what ifs and making sure that I would get to the main point of what I wanted to get to, which was an open look at that bucket. That was the whole determining factor to get a good look at that basket. So in setting screens, the, like I told Sam, the proper depth, the proper <laughs> angle, proper situation, making sure <clears throat> that when I went through the setup, that making sure that when I got the basketball, this guy was still hung up on the screen or going behind the screen. So it was for me, I'm a technical player coming with a lot of speed, a lot of burst, a lot of energy, and making sure that I'm technically locked in to exactly what that team was going to do and being able to make the adjustments with my guys on the court. And I would go through that before the game started, not during the game running around wasting time to making sure that I was technically sound and ready to execute. That's very, very important. And Sam heard it a lot. Mark <laughs> heard it a lot also, too. Big Dukes was my man. Big Dukes with that wide screen. They did a great job. Jay Vincent at the time did a, a fantastic job. So it, it was a great situation for me as well as the rest of the team because all the guys, Derek, Mark, technically locked in. Brad Davis at the time also, too, understanding exactly what to do. We executed the basketball in a fantastic way to be able to get good shots and play uh, great team basketball. You finally get this collection of talent all on the same page. You win 53 games, but you advance to the Western Conference Finals, and you meet pretty much a Hall of Fame team in the L.A. Lakers. And you go to a seventh game with them, and you fall up a little short in that seventh game. But I, comments that I heard you say, if that game seven had been in Dallas, you feel like you guys would have won it. And then Derek Harper saying he would take that team and put it up against any team in Mavs history just because of the talent that you guys had and the fight that you guys had. When you look at that 87, 88 year and how it ended, uh, how do you wrap that up? How do you sum it all up? Well, for me, it's just still a hole in my heart. I mean, for, for that kind of a time, because you spend so much time trying to get to the pinnacle. That's what the reason why we're here. We're trying to play the game. We're trying to get to the highest level. And you're trying to do that as an individual and as a team, trying to come together to being able to be the best and beat the best. And uh, during those years, we beat the Lakers. That year, I think we beat the Lakers three out of the five games. Uh, we, we played with the last game, winning on their home court. And I think with those kinds of important things, we understood that we had the team to being able to go and do the job there. But the important thing with that is that they had a fantastic basketball team and a team that really within my own heart, knowing what kind of great team that they had when you got a big 6'9", Magic Johnson, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, my goodness, you know, James Worthy, you got Byron Scott that could light it up, light it up out there too. You got, you got, you got Kurt Rambis who was the power forward forward that time that was just a, a wild man in, in the <laughs> middle and that kind of a thing. Bob McAdoo coming off the bench. The, oh, those, kind of, those kind of things were, were, were very, very volatile times and being able to have a great team like that. And we knew we could do, we could advance, but telling you what, playing that seventh game when it came to the end of the game and making the plays and the hearing the crowd and all those kinds of things that would go on and making the plays, they're the ones who made the plays at the end of the, the game and understanding till this day, till this day, I think we would have won the game if it was here. But I still, like Derek said, take my hat off to a fantastic basketball team and, and a great Hall of Fame team that, uh, that, that, that beat us and, and went on to win the championship against Detroit. When you look at and you spent two more years with the Knicks after you left uh, Dallas, but do you look at that series as the, 
your closest chance to becoming a champion personally as a player? Well, you know, so then becoming a champion personally with the Mavericks, because remember, I went into New York and we lost to Houston going 3-2 in 1994. But the important factor here with the Mavs was that that was the, the time. Back in 86, we lost the second round uh, uh, playoff with, uh, with, uh, with the Lakers also, too, and, and being able to not get over. If we knew that if it was going to be a championship time, We'd have to get through the team that was the best in the Western Conference at that time, and that was the Los Angeles Lakers and trying to get through the top. And, and we, we, we didn't do it. We had, a, we had a chance to do it in the seventh game and move, move forward, but that wasn't it. But it was a great ride getting there incrementally, putting ourselves on the, on the place, and then, and then the, 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 the town, the crowd, everybody in on it with us, too. It was the, it was the loudest I've ever, I've ever heard a, a crowd whenever you, whenever you were at Reunion Arena, and the, the reverberation was just ridiculous.